All right, so moment of inertia in 2D is fine, but it's three dimensions where we really find the useful stuff in robotics, in vehicular design, architecture, all kinds of applications. We want to be able to compute moment of inertia in 3D. So let's, let's give it a go. Let's try. Let's say that we have a solid cone, and let's keep the density uniform this time. And we're going to rotate that cone about the central axis, the axis that goes through the apex and the center of the circular disk at the bottom. Let's say that that axis is the Z axis, and our cone is of height H, and the base circle is radius capital R. Now the mass element is just a constant rho times the volume element. What's the moment of inertia element? That is r squared dm, where r is the distance from this volume element, from this mass element, to the z-axis. In this case, it depends only on x and y, and in this case, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. That's not always the case. You have to figure this out each time you solve one of these problems. Okay, so that's our moment of inertia element. Now, the rest is easy, right? All we have to do is integrate. So let's integrate rho times quantity x squared plus y squared, dz, dy, dx. Let's say we do the z component of the integral first. Now, the limits of integration might be a little involved. The bottom limit is easy. That z equals zero. The top limit is h minus h times square root of x squared plus y squared divided by r. Ooh, that's a mess. And, and, and then once we've done that, then we have to integrate over the circular disk of radius capital R in the plane, that means y is going from minus square root of r squared minus x squared to plus square root of r squared minus x squared, and x goes from minus r to r, but that's no consolation because all the rest of the limits in this problem are awful. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can do this. I'm definitely sure I don't want to do this. So what do we do? Well, we could integrate a different way. We could slice horizontally, compute the moment of inertia of a circular disk about the center, and then add up those elements integrating with respect to z when you're all done. That's one possibility, and we could do that. But a better way would be to use a different coordinate system, a polar or cylindrical coordinate system, to simplify these limits of integration. And that's the way that we're eventually going to do it, but not now. For now, we fail. We give up. We say, <laughs> too tough for me. I'm going to stick to simpler, rectangular kinds of shapes for now.